Well, what's up, family? We have another episode of Just Breathe with April Love, and I am super excited about our guest. I have followed her for, I guess, since the days I was really um, into Twitter. You know, I would check it often. Twitter was popping. Um, now it's called X, but she was she was big on there. She was always saying so many amazing and empowering things, um, sharing her journey, sharing her seasons. And her name is Tara Carissa Hodges. She is an empowerment speaker. She is a minister. She is a prophetess and uh, a businesswoman, an author, now a mother and a wife. So I think that you'll get a lot, especially my mommies in the audience, will get a lot out of this conversation today. Um, is it possible to honor your calling, um, be obedient to God and still go about your business in this crazy mixed up world? Yes, it is. But there are strategies. There are strategies that can take you to higher heights and deeper depths. And you need those kind of tenants. And I think she's an amazing case study for all of us of how you can have it all. You know, um, God does promise us an abundant life, exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Right. So today we're going to get into this conversation with Tara and kind of talk to her about what that means to her. And maybe you can see yourself in her story. Um, I think we can all glean from one another. I think as iron sharpens iron, um, so do we, you know, we have to start to create a circle around us of people who are doing currently what you're doing or even better. I feel like this is the season in all of our lives where we need to be looking for greater. Um, I think in the midst of chaos, so many things are created, you know, millionaires, people are being healed. People are um, showing up for one another. After the pandemic happened a few years back, um, the world has kind of not, you know, it's almost been off track. You know, and I don't know. I don't know if it'll ever be back on track. I don't know if it'll ever be the way it was before um, the great pandemic. But I do know that we have to own our day. We have to show up. We have to live on purpose and in purpose. And I'm going to talk to Tara Carissa Hodges about how she does it. Stay tuned. <laughs> This conversation is going to be really good because I have waited to talk to Mrs. Tara Carissa Hodges for a while. Um, being one of the first, I think, early adapters to following you on social media and the boldness that you had in sharing your, 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 your faith and your goals. And it was amazing to watch your journey. And, and to have you here today, I'm honored. Oh, thank you. Truly honored and humbled. Thank you for having me. So God be the glory. Yes. So now for those of you that mm -hmm. are not familiar, can you kind of just tell a quick little recap of who you are? Oh, Lord Jesus. I who am I? <laughs> Child, listen, I am, number one, I consider myself to be an alchemist, oh, I meaning I know how to take storms. I know how to take the rain, praise God, and make that thing work for me. My enemies will mean it for evil. God will work it for good. And so yes. primarily that's who I am. But most people know me as an empowerment speaker mm -hmm. um, because I've traveled the globe. I've mm -hmm. been spoken in several countries, mm -hmm. uh, women's empowerment brunches and churches and seminars and conferences, you name it. Um, and then also I'm a life coach. I give God the glory for that. I've coached now over 10,000 women. Wow. And so I give God the glory for that. That launched in, I want to say 2012. I might be a couple years off on my date because I've been running hard. Yeah. Um, but I just give God the glory that he has used my life to touch and empower with so many women. I, that's very humbling for me. Nice. Nice. Um, well, that summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else we'll just get in this yeah. conversation. But um, so tell us, okay, so take it back because a lot of people, people may have a call on their life mm -hmm. or that mantle, that prophetic mantle or whatever. And you don't necessarily recognize that. And you don't always have a person, um, an elder or a, a parent, you know, sometimes when their PKs is passed down through the family. Mm -hmm. But when God is like specifically called you, mm -hmm. how do you, what, how did you recognize that? You know? You know what? For me, it was just a knowing. I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking to a woman that literally to this day, my mom still has writings from my second grade teacher that said, Tara said an angel walked in the class and said something to her today. Literally. Okay. Uh -huh. Then take it back to when I was nine years old and I got baptized, 1992. I'm 40, mm. y'all. I'll be 41 whenever. Sometimes uh, okay. this year. Never <laughs> Happy but early I, birthday. Thank you. 
I was baptized at nine years old. And when I went to my mom and I said, you know, I want to be baptized, my mom didn't think I understood what that meant. But my uncle Billy was like, no, she comes to church. She knows what it is. She's one of the active kids at the church. Let her do it. Mm-hmm. And at 14, I knew I had the gift of prophecy. Oh, you did? My geometry okay. teacher, Mrs. Plunkett, I never will forget it. I was sitting in class and it just came to me. I said, you're going to get engaged over Thanksgiving. Now, mind you, this was before social media. This was right. before, you know, the prophetic as we know it. Right. Um, and <laughs> this is a, a white lady. We have, <laughs> we share nothing in common. Right. But I, you're going to get engaged. And guess what, baby? When we came back from break, she was engaged. She was like, do you know my fiance? I'm like, girl, don't nobody know your man? I didn't say Especially it like that thing. You. But right, but I <laughs> why, was a why child. Would I know why him? would I know him? Right. But it came to pass. Mm-hmm. And so literally, I was the teen at church, uh, Joseph Creek Missionary Baptist Church, Starbuck, Mississippi. I was the teen <laughs> at church that we were 14 years old. And all of the teens went to Six Flags. And I stayed on the bus and rode to a woman that art loose at the Georgia Dome. And I heard Dr. Juanita Bynum preach, kill it. That's how much I remember. I remember what she preached. And so this has always been who I am. Now, have Mm -hmm. I always been perfect? No. And I still might cuss you out if I feel like it today. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I ain't saying I'm perfect, baby. I'm Mm -hmm. just saying I know I'm called. And I'm saying Mm -hmm. I know that I'm chosen. And I'm just saying I didn't wake up and see somebody else doing it and say, I think I can do that too. Yeah. You understand? So that's been my journey so much so that when I went off, to college, you and I both graduated Florida a and University. Mm-hmm. Most people probably never would have put Tara and church in the same sentence. Not that I was wilding out because I can count on one hand with fingers left over how many times I went to the club. I'm just not a clubber. Right. But that just was not the part of my identity mm-hmm. that I chose to announce. And oh. so when I moved to Atlanta in 2006, after graduating FAMU in 2005, that's really when I got back off into my journey, the way that people from Mississippi who I grew up with remember me really being into my journey. And so I've just been living life and journeying ever since, unapologetically. Unapologetically. I love that. So 2005. OK, so now we're approaching about 20 years since you've been out of college. Undergrad, yes. Yeah, undergrad. Mm-hmm. So when you finish undergrad, mm-hmm. okay, you leave in Tallahassee, it's behind you. Mm-hmm. You're headed towards Atlanta. ATL, Sean. ATL. So when you got here, what did you do? I'm trying to really kind of show them how you kind of transitioned into your calling. Okay, you know I mean? so the very first thing that I did that I remember like yesterday is I really felt God was telling me to cut off all of my hair. And mm. you're talking to a woman that I have naturally long hair. Right. Even when you look back at my pictures from high school, even in college, I have naturally long hair. And so I moved to Atlanta and I went natural before it was in style to go natural. And my boyfriend at the time, <laughs> he was like, girl, what you going through? <laughs> um, you know, it was just, you know, what you going through, girl? And I'm like, listen, this is what God told me to do. Right. And at that time, I was a member of Greater St. Stephen's. Oh. With yeah. Bishop Paul Mama Moore, and yeah. I still remember my membership number four four nine zero eight. Amen. Okay, <laughs> that was when they were off a snap finger. I, I don't know yeah. where they are today. They yeah. might still be there. I don't know. Yeah. But um, and I was a member there, and I really began my journey there until I felt God calling me away from that particular ministry, not for any other reason other than personal growth. Right. But that was my Atlanta journey. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Now, see, that's so. That's so. Uh, That's so inspirational, too, for others to hear, because a lot of people have calls. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have a knowing, Mm -hmm. but it's the obedience Mm -hmm. in doing it that sometimes put them in direct opposition of of their life. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, not the way that their husband or the wife is living and um, or or the circle of influence, their friends or whatever. But they know that something is because you were being set apart. It's obvious Mm -hmm. because you didn't have a desire to Mm -hmm. do certain things. And if you did, it was just because and you probably just didn't. Correct. As you know, Mm -hmm. so now when that's happening, how does someone navigate that? Like they're out here, they feel like they're on an island. I'm kind of speaking for myself because in the past when I, when I had that knowing, I was not expeditiously obedient. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was kind of like, um, I'm going to do it a little bit. I'm going to do it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And until it was something where I had no choice, Mm -hmm. I had to, everything was gone at that point. So I had to go to God. But what is it that you can share that can help people navigate when you're in the midst of it and you know that God is turning you somewhere else? You really have to fall in love with the vision that God is showing you. Your vision, it is what's to come. And believe it. And you really have to tune in to what you know is to come Mm -hmm. when everything around you is saying opposite. 
Right. And so that's the key is looking ahead, looking mm-hmm. forward. What's the next chapter going to be? What is God promising me? What am I supposed to be doing? Because right. again, I started on this journey in 2006. What was I, 22, 23 at that mm-hmm. time? And here I am 40. I'll be 41 in June. And so what was not cool at 21, 22, I'm seeing them same people come around now. Now they're doing it. Mm-hmm. Or now, well, how did you navigate this? How did you navigate that? Mm-hmm. And so for the chosen, you have to understand that it's okay to be out of season, but in season. Mm. Out of season amongst your peers, right. in season for your call, your purpose, your anointing, your assignment. Mm. You hear that, guys? Your assignment. Absolutely. Yeah, that helps me to kind of move into something that I'm really fighting um, with clients and with just people around me, my mentees, imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Now, you know it's more than perpetuated itself since of social media. Mm-hmm. When you were starting, it wasn't as prevalent social media, so you had no choice but to... God had to give you your own blueprint. You mm-hmm. couldn't go and emulate somebody Correct. or do it like they do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure there's people out there looking at you and mm-hmm. doing it like you're doing mm-hmm. it. So that's another thing when it comes to knowing your assignment and not saying, well, I got to sound like Bishop this or I got to sound like prophet is that. Um, do you think you need to be away? Do you think you need to just have that time with God or just you think it just comes to you or people are just kind of just finding themselves not being confident in who they are, how they sound, how they present, and find themselves just trying to find somebody to mimic. You have to do it your way. Yeah. Your way is the only way that's going to be the safe way, the best way. Right. Because it's authentic to you. Mm -hmm. From a spiritual perspective, I never recommend mimicking anyone because it reminds me of the story of the sons of Sceva. Okay, Mm -hmm. and they got over into something they could not handle because Mm -hmm. those demons said, Jesus, we know. Paul, we know, but who are you? Right. And sometimes you have attracted attacks to your life because you were emulating somebody in something. Okay. And so you were emulating their strength, but didn't have their power. Ooh. You gotta understand, you gotta understand the spirit world. Ephesians 6 breaks down the ranks. And so if you're acting like a general and mm-hmm. speaking like a general, mm-hmm. but you really are a private, don't be surprised when an attack that a general knows how to take out takes you out. Ooh. That's why I don't mimic anybody. And I'm not moved by people who mimic me. Because if you want to wrestle with the demons I've had to wrestle with, go for it. Be my guest. <laughs> Be my guest, <laughs> right. baby. But I hope you know how to come up out of it. Right, right. Because that you can't that you can't mimic. You cannot mimic that. <laughs> which just... is why the sons of Sceva ended up in a worse predicament mm-hmm. than they were before they even began. Wow. Because it wasn't their call to walk. Mm-hmm. It wasn't their assignment to live out. Mm-hmm. And so many times people see your call, your assignment, they see the glitz and they see the glam. Right. And there is an aspect to that. Right. But understand that everything has an opposite. Right. So the brighter the light, the deeper the dark. The more depth the dark mm-hmm. has to be. Yeah. Yeah, to whom much is given, much is required. Absolutely. Yeah. And people don't understand the magnitude of that. And that's why people can look at my life and say, well, I heard this happen and or this might have happened to you. How did that not take you out? Because I was equipped for it. Mm-hmm. I was prepared for it. So am I human? Have I had good days, bad days? Absolutely. Even mm-hmm. Jesus wept. But have I been destroyed? I think not. Right. I love that. I love that. But have I been destroyed? Did you die? (laughs) Absolutely not. So, (laughs) all right. So um, let's kind of get into what is the whole, is it a ministry that you have? I actually do have a ministry. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I mean, I've been in ministry (laughs) since 2006. But I love that question because from day one, I have not done ministry conventionally. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people know me from Twitter. Well, now it's called X. But Twitter. Twitter is where I really became known to the world. I would sit down and just tweet out thoughts from my own private meditation, Bible study, prayer time, et cetera, and they will go viral. Mm-hmm. Even before that, MySpace, I would write my blogs on MySpace. And one day God said, go check and see how many subscribers you have to your blog. I had 10,000 subscribers. Wow. And then I would see people copying my blog. Like, it was a revelation. You understand? <laughs> people, <laughs> right. People, word for word. But anyway. People don't people. People don't people. <laughs> okay. 
And so that's really where it began. But I want to go back to one of your points that you asked me about. How do you do ministry? You do it your way. Mm-hmm. Listen, I have heard people say, Tara can't preach. That's fine, boo-boo. I'm just not for you. Right. I've heard people say, Juanita Bynum can't preach or T.D. Jakes can't preach. But you are right for your audience. And yes. that's what people have to understand. Mm-hmm. So don't try to mimic somebody else mm-hmm. because they're for their audience. You have to be for your audience. Yes, that is a oh, that is such a big deal. There are people that would resonate with you that would never never resonate with this person or that person because um it's so funny because i've had that on my when i got the thing is when you start being obedient Mm -hmm. and when you really surrender and god takes you through and brings you out you become sometimes a little bit full of zeal (laughs) so i had that moment i was on i'm judging people i'm doing the most but i felt like it was stuff that i was seeing actually in the church Mm -hmm. that was in direct opposition at that point so i'm like well god you saying this and i'm saying that i'm you saying you know so it, it got me a little bit in a quandary with that so I basically, well, I've only, I've been sat down a couple times in these churches. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So then I had to come to realize I was trying to force my call to be like my girlfriends mm-hmm. or like my cousins. Mm-hmm. And they're actually in the church. It's mm-hmm. called, but I'm called to the marketplace. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really have a full revelation of that. So mm-hmm. I was trying to do what I was doing. And I feel like I'm specifically called to entertainment. Mm-hmm. Sphere. Mm-hmm. Sphere. Is that what it's called? You got it. Okay, cool. Uh-huh. Okay, so entertainment, the world of entertainment. So, and that in and of itself is, those are some chief demons, okay? So, but I was trying to do what I was doing actually in the church. Mm-hmm. And it was being seen as radical mm-hmm. or, you know, or, you know, why are you questioning these things? Because, you, you know, we, we've we we've kind of been bred on the, you don't question God, mm. you don't ask that. You, you you do what the pastor says and you know that sort of thing and it just never it mm-hmm. would just well up in me like but I have questions but I have questions mm-hmm. when I especially when I was really you know younger and uh, questions that other people didn't have so then I would get like well maybe I'm just you know maybe I'm gonna get in trouble with God so then I went quiet you know so it's just a whole bunch of things that you go through because you just assume and I, I mean that was so early it wasn't really social media so I didn't know it was imposter mm-hmm. syndrome I was trying to I just felt like God was on me I've been you know I had a couple words that I really were confirming words Mm -hmm. and then trying to do them, but in somebody else's kind of template, you Mm -hmm. know? So I guess to, to sum that all up, when you know, you know, were the things starting to just come to you? Like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm walking in this ministry. I did. Did you know you were going to be an author at the time? Did you know you were going to do the things that you're doing in ministry or just your obedience? You just kept walking and things start to, A combination of both. Okay. I knew, but I didn't know when. And so I just got started where I was. Okay. So when I was on Twitter, I knew I'm supposed to be on Twitter releasing these words of inspiration. Okay. And then the speaking engagements came. Now, I've known I was called to preach since 14, 16 years old. But I didn't know, okay, by the time I'm this age, because... From my perspective, I went off to Florida a and and I got my degree in broadcast journalism, okay? Mm-hmm. I was trying to be the VJ on MTV or BET. Ministry was not on my mind, okay? Right. So for me, I always had in the back of my mind, I'll do ministry I'm around 40 or 50, you know, old folks. Because yeah. when you're 20, that's old. I'm 40, ain't old. <laughs> <laughs> a new revelation. But anyway, yeah. Right. <laughs> so I did not know Mm-hmm. When I just knew eventually. So I literally just began focusing on that season. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to tell everybody listening in is focus on your season. In one season, David was a shepherd boy. In another season, he was a king. king right. But he could not focus on being king in the season that he was called to be a shepherd boy. Or he would have jacked up his shepherd boy season. Right. <laughs> so in that season of my life, I was called to Twitter. Okay, when Twitter began to take off, I got my speaking engagements. Then the next thing that emerged was my coaching. Then from there, my book and even books that I have out now. So, but to go back even further than that, I've known since I was 21 years old that I would write a children's book. Mm. This year, I wrote my children's book. Well, actually, I wrote it last year, but it launches this year. Okay. So everything has a time and a season. Mm -hmm. You just have to wait on when it is that thing season because now it's the perfect season because I'm a mommy now. Right. You understand? And so it makes sense for me, especially the type of children's book, because I'm not just releasing a regular children's book, but Mm -hmm. the type of children's book. And so I would say honor your season by remaining present in your season. Don't try to dress for the wintertime in the 
summertime just because you know winter is coming. Right. It's summertime. Right. Address your season and get ready for your next season as you go. That's real good. That's real good. What season are you guys in? <laughs> <laughs> it's time to have some real conversations with yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what season are we in? Okay. Well, tell us about um, the books. Tell us about that whole journey. Sure. Well, my and the bi- speaking and the coaching. <laughs> Okay, well, my very first book I wrote over a decade ago was an ebook, Unapologetically Anointed. Okay. Um, I don't even know if that's still available on my website anymore. Oh. But anyway, that was the very first book that I wrote. And I wrote about um, the different things that you will encounter when you're anointed, both outside the church and inside the church. Mm. Because the reality of it is, is that David had enemies on the inside and the outside. And so often when we're done fighting the enemies on the outside, now we got to come face people on the inside. Church right. folks. Church folks. Anointed folks. Because after all, Saul was anointed Mm -hmm. and we forget that sometimes our enemies are anointed so what in the world do you do with an anointed enemy anointed enemy enemy. Mm -hmm. I talk about that in my book unapologetically anointed I might put it back on my website no you should you should you should (laughs) you understand Um, and then so from there uh, wealth circle which you see here Mm -hmm. was my journey to wealth becoming a millionaire at the age of 35 and so the steps that I took to get there what built that coaching business what what built that to where it was at 35. Right. Um, and then the book that I have coming out this year, actually I have a couple of books coming out, one with a celebrity. I'm just going to tease that right there. Uh, but I want to talk about my children's book because that's the one that is so near and dear to my heart Okay. because it's a children's affirmation book. Ooh. I truly believe if we teach children at a young age how to speak over themselves, mm-hmm. we will see the world change self-esteem it begins as early as two years old in children and so they need to know what to speak over themselves because they might go to school and a bully might say you're ugly i am wonderfully and fearfully made yeah so going back okay with the book Mm -hmm. um children's affirmation i love that because those are the that's the years you have to get them ready Mm -hmm. because kids are kids are cruel Mm -hmm. like bullying and all that stuff but if i'm confident going in Mm -hmm. and people don't think about they think about when it's a problem, then we'll fix it. By mm-hmm. then, it's like somebody didn't embed that mm-hmm. in you, in your subconscious. Um, so now it's different. So how old is your baby? My baby, she's one. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay, so she's a little one. Little All right. One. So this means a l- different. It's mm-hmm. a different thing now, writing this mm-hmm. children's book. You come from a, yes, it's Absolutely. a mother. Mm-hmm. Have you always wanted to be a mother? No, <laughs> I have not. <laughs> Okay. I, let me say this. There are times when I was like, yeah, you know, I'll be a mom one day. Uh, and then there was a part of my journey. I was like, I don't know if motherhood is for me. I can mm-hmm. totally see myself being Oprah, traveling the world, yeah. you know, blessing orphanages along the yeah, way. Yeah. Um, and then around, this had to be right at the pandemic, 2019, 2020. I had to go into the hospital very briefly because I... At 16, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay. There is no cure for that. Mm-hmm. And back then, I would end up in the hospital whew, like a couple of times a year because of the pain, pain. of my cycle. Okay, yeah. When I got into ministry, I told God, if you want me to tell these people that you were healing, you have to heal me. And so literally for well over a decade, I had no problems with my cycle. And so about five years ago, 2019, 35 years old, I had a very painful cycle. I'm like, I am going to the emergency room because mm-hmm. I haven't had one of these in well over a decade. Right. And when I got there, uh, the doctor said, okay, I'm going to treat you to get you out of the emergency room, but I want you to follow up with an OBGYN. Mm-hmm. And I followed up with one of the best in the world. People from all over the world come in to see him, Dr. Randell, okay. here in Atlanta. Okay. He was like, I need to do surgery on you. He said, now here's the thing. He said, I won't do it if you don't want children. He said, but if you want children, let's go in here and have this surgery. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I had a myomectomy. Okay. And uh, we took care of everything. I praise God for how he operates through Dr. Randell. Mm -hmm. I've not had any more painful surgeries. And my baby is here. Right. Yes. So now how does this feel? It feels amazing because when I went through that, um, and, and, you know, he and several other people really just asked me, do you want to have children? Now was the time to decide because you're not a spring chicken. Right. And despite what, you know, the world might say or society might say, once you get past, I believe it's 35 years old, it is considered a geriatric pregnancy. That's crazy. It's crazy, okay. but it's real because yeah. if you think about it, 
our bodies began preparing to be able to get pregnant in our teens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you yeah. So by the time I hit 35, I'd already been going through this for 20 years. You're going to get pregnant or not, little girl? Right. <laughs> and so when I started having that conversation, I prayed and I said, God, you know, I could be happy either way. Which way do I go? And I never will forget the night I just felt God saying, I created you to be a mom. Mm. And from that moment on, I fell in love with being a mother. And I'm trying not to cry now, but the first time I laid eyes on my little girl, I'm like, this is why I was born. This is why I was created. This is my ministry. Yeah. And I can't wait to have more. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. We got an announcement today? Uh, not today. <laughs> But, but, but soon, if ever soon. Soon, I'll soon. Yes. I see that. I, I love that for you. I love that for Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to move from children to the church. Oh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yes. So what, what in your mm -hmm. expert opinion, mm -hmm. what do you think the state of the church is? And I mean at large. I don't mean like individual. There are individual, <laughs> salacious, scandalous instances going on. You know, um, daily, according mm -hmm. to Larry Reed mm -hmm. and his other people. Um, but the overall church body of Christ, what, what, is, what is your take on it currently? For the body of Christ, I think we are healthy. I think we are hearing from God. Mm -hmm. I think we are living in this world, but not of this world okay. as much as possible. You understand? Um... But please understand that for me, the body of Christ and the church are two different entities. Yeah. Okay. You understand? Let's talk about that. So, so which one are you asking me about? Let's, <laughs> Let's get some clarity. First of all, not the body of Christ at large uh -huh. then. Let's go ahead and just put over it over here with the church. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Well, the church, because I'm a firm believer that we are in the end times. Okay. No man knows the day or the hour, but Matthew 24 is clear. Mm -hmm. We shall know the season. Right. And so... The church, not the body of Christ, but the church okay. is exactly where the Bible said it would be. It's a hot mess. A hot mess. It's yes. a hot mess yeah. because we are uh, listening to what tickles our ears. Mm -hmm. We're not heeding to sound doctrine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, right before I walked in here, I saw something on Facebook that said so many preachers are striving for Hollywood instead of holiness. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. And I do believe that there are people that are called to entertainment. I mean, yeah. one of my degrees is broadcast journalism. Right. And I do quite a bit in the media world behind the scenes. Most people don't realize that I do. Right. But my commitment has been to positive media. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been to positive impact because I understand how music and even television shows can impact your subconscious mind, thus impacting your belief system, mm -hmm. thus impacting your behavior. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think that we have to understand that everything that's saying God or even Jesus is not of God. And, and Jesus tells you that. Mm -hmm. you know, many would say, well, Lord, we did this, we did that. Um, but I will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Right. And so it is up to the individual believer to make sure that you are reading your word so that you can discern the difference between the body of Christ and, and the, the church. church. Right, right. Ooh. I need that recording to run around because people, because <laughs> people want to attack, and I know what they're doing is attacking mm -hmm. the church, mm -hmm. but it's it's um there's a difference, mm -hmm. there's a difference because there's some people that are not attending the four walls of the church any longer, but are still doing ministry, still Powerful changing the world. Of God, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And then some people in the four walls mm -hmm. with titles and mm -hmm. all kind of um. You know, <laughs> all kind of extras I hear you. Um, and have not mm -hmm. done anything mm -hmm. outside of, you know, things that give them what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just want to be a differentiation because I hate I get a little bit because I am I was a church kid. So I get a little bit defensive. It was like the church, the church. You can't speak for every church mm -hmm. across the mm -hmm. globe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And but there is some. But I think that, like you said, it's a it is to be a hot mess. Mm -hmm. That is what it's doing. There's a lot of shaking up going on mm -hmm. right now. But it's a lot of shaking up going on in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Like, um. People are really at all time high of anxiety, yeah. um, can't focus, confusion. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. If I hear one more person say, I don't know what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. um, but what kind of sound advice can you offer these people that are just floating in the wind? They're believers, but have they tapped into that little thing, that conversation with God lately? Maybe mm -hmm. not. You're not going to know why you were created if you don't have a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And a conversation with God is going to require set aside time, prayer, meditation, journaling, 
seeking God. Right. But then I'm also a firm believer that nothing that we have been through is wasted. Mm -hmm. Everything that you have been through is pointing you to your purpose. And so what is it that you've been through that you survived? That's a part of your purpose because God doesn't waste pain. Mm -mm. That's why you guys hear me say it all the time. I'm not mad. I'm made. (laughs) <laughs> and we know this, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Right. And so when you really love God, you can see what the enemy intended, but you can still walk in God's outcome, his expectation. Right. And so that's why there's nobody in my life I'm mad at. Now, there are plenty of people I have boundaries with, right. but there's nobody I'm mad at. There's nobody I hate. There's nobody I haven't forgiven. What is there to forgive when God used you to produce me what you see today? Right. What is that to forgive? You might have meant it for evil, but God used it. It worked for me. It blessed me. Mm -hmm. So what is there to be? I was talking to one of my girlfriends the other day. I said, baby, nobody can shame you over anything because I can tell you the stuff that you don't know. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I've embraced my journey. I've embraced the things that God has used to make me. And I really implore everybody to do that. Stop being ashamed. Stop running and stop... You you know, just living in this, you know, had my life been perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. Mm -hmm. We weren't created to have a perfect life. We were created to have a purposeful life. Right. You understand? There's a difference. I I didn't come here to be perfect. I came to be purposeful. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so when you catch that revelation, I was never meant to come here and have a perfect life. You can have a good life. Yeah. But when you accept that, a lot of your anxiety, your shame, your embarrassment, your hurt, your humiliation, it goes away. Everybody was born with a cross. To bear, yes. Now, my cross might have come with a divorce. Mm -hmm. Your cross might come with a sick child later in your life. Somebody else's cross might come when they were born. They didn't have the best parents. But everybody has had something. And the more you embrace that something and, and take what you got to create better, create good, and move on and stop crying over what you think should have been, the more at peace you're going to be. Hmm. I'm filling up my journal. I don't know about you guys. I'm digital and analog at the same time. And this is some good (laughs) stuff. Everybody has a cross to bear. Yours is this. Yours may be that. Wow. And that's why I I don't laugh at people, nor do I judge people, nor do I envy people. Right. Everybody has a season. Exactly. Everybody has a season. Yes. So that's why I tell people don't sit too high, nor look too low. Mm -hmm. Because you don't control the weather. Only God does. Love that. Love that. It reminds me of, um, it was Dr. Miles Monroe that spoke about the, what is our greatest accomplishments and, and visions and dreams are, um, the majority of them are in the, the graveyard. Because mm. people, people don't think that you can just live and just live and not live. Mm. Live in lowercase and not uppercase. Mm-hmm. But God, God has promised us an abundant life, mm-hmm. you know? Um so once you believe that, anything else should just be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like that's just, and it's not just about wealth. Can we kind of tap into that too? Because you have some people that feel like, okay, the lo- they they misquote it all the time. The love of money. No, 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 no. <laughs> the love of money. Yes, you don't love money or worship money, but we like mm-hmm. having money. Like it's we need, need money it. to do things. The Bible says money answereth all things. Right. That's Bible. Then they want to go and say, well, you know, Jesus didn't have any of those things, and you know, you. It's almost like sacrificial to the point where you, we are seeking to, I guess, put wealth in front of you know what I'm saying. But I, I don't, I don't feel that way. Let's well, kind first of, talk of all, about I want to challenge that Jesus didn't have any of that. Okay. I want to take us back. <laughs> I want to take us back. Right. Uh, so when Peter had to pay his taxes, and mm-hmm. Jesus told him where to go fish. Mm-hmm. And I have a teaching that I sold, we sold over 10,000 copies several years ago, teach me how to fish. Mm-hmm. And it was basically about how to find your prosperity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so at the end of the day, no, we don't allow money to govern us. Right. We do not love money. Okay. But at the end of the day, the Bible does say that money answereth all things. things. Right. Money answereth all things things. Mm -hmm. How can I be a blessing? God has blessed me in such a way where I build wells in villages Mm -hmm. so that people can have fresh water. Mm -hmm. People who lack fresh water, they don't need my prayer. They need my money. Right. Exactly. The orphanages that I supply Mm -hmm. every single month, they Mm -hmm. don't need my prayer. Yeah. They need my money. Exactly. And so money in and of itself is not evil. You can have money without money having you. Exactly. Motivated by it. I love that. 
Absolutely. Because I've seen firsthand with, with clients and I'm talking about wealthy people to a certain extent, but I've in, in the people, some people that have had very limited financial resources, but they hoard it. And I feel like money is energetic. You're supposed to release it. Like even in this book that I, um, I read all the time, Think and Grow Rich, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a staple. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big part about it is having definite of purpose. You know what I'm saying? Like if you want to be in a position to employ people, I want mm-hmm. to be in a position to build wells. I want to be in the position to help with education, inner city. You can't do that without money. Correct. So definite of purpose changes that whole perspective anyway. The, the resources will come. God is faithful. Mm-hmm. Provision for the vision. Mm-hmm. Like you said, these visions sometimes, I know for myself and I'm sure others have seen vision that are like, who's going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> who's going to do that? Mm-hmm. Like this podcast, who's going to talk on that? <laughs> I'll produce it. But God says, and I just believe what God says. Mm-hmm. And then it comes to pass. I wish more people could see those case studies and see like you're, you, you've you attained wealth, but mm-hmm. that's not been the majority of what you spoke about. What you're doing is being obedient to God. And then you just have the resources. Absolutely. Yeah. God is providing for the vision. Right. Because there's a, there's a reason why God created me in the earth. Right. And in order for me to do what he's instructed me to do again, that requires more than prayer. Mm-hmm. When pastors reach out to me, they're not just reaching out for prayer. They're reaching out for resources. Mm-hmm. And I praise God that he has put me in a position to be able to give. Yeah. And I think that is the key is remembering while we have, we are Blessed to be a blessing. Blessing, Right. But there's nothing wrong with having wealth. The Bible speaks about a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And that's not just spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's also money. Now, I want to caution right here because leaving a spiritual and a healthy mental and physical inheritance is just as important, if not more important than the financial aspect of it. So I don't want people to think that I'm, you know, putting money up here and everything else below. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. When my inside got right, my bank account got right. Yeah. And somebody needs to catch that because there's a reason why you see people make all this money and then they lose it mm-hmm. or they make all this money and they're not happy right. because they got the outside, but they didn't get the inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I want everybody to be encouraged and understand that money in and of itself is not evil. Mm-mm. It's not evil. It's a mm-hmm. tool. Yeah. It's if a tool. It were evil, Absolutely God a tool. never would have made Solomon the wealthiest man mm-hmm. in history. Right. If it were evil, God never would have promised Abraham wealth. Right. It, if it were evil, uh, the children of Israel never would have been able to plunder the Egyptians on their way out. Mm. So we got to read the word and read it in context. Read it. <laughs> read in your context. word. Read your word in context. Yes. Because I'm telling you, they will flip a scripture so quick. And that's when you got to know the favor. word for yourself. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The word. <laughs> so tell us about this secret sauce. You, you're not going to get all the sauce because you got to buy the book. <laughs> But <laughs> available at Barnes and Noble. Yes, we love Barnes and Noble. Yes, I love a little brick and mortar too. So I literally break down how I made my first million, and one of the key concepts that I want everybody to understand is that in order to get to millionaire status, right. you got to have something for everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. I have ten thousand dollar coaching programs, and you can also join my subscription club for twenty dollars. So no matter where you are in your financial journey, you can still receive something from me. Oh, nice. And that's what I want everybody to hear is no matter what your line of work is, have something for everybody. I love because that. Because the more people you can serve, the more money you can get in. Yeah, absolutely. You bring those people into your world. Absolutely. They opt in and I'm telling you. And I have clients that started out with me when they were in college and all they could do is participate in my $20 a month subscription. And now <laughs> they're paying the $10,000. Okay. Right. And, and so that is key. It, it's key to be able to offer people something where they are. Exactly. Meet them where they are. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because they may not ever get to you. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's something else I tell people. You might not ever sit down and have a one-on-one with me. Now that I'm a mommy, my time is really limited mm-hmm. on purpose. I don't even, I get invitation to conferences. I'm like, I ain't coming. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, when I was in my twenties, not married, no children, I was on the road every single weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that my was that season, season. Has, that, <laughs> that was that season, but yeah. my season has shifted and I don't knock the wives and mom that do it. I'm just talking about my season and what I feel called to do. Right. But it's also why I have a conference line that every single week we serve over 10,000 people in over 30 
countries. Oh, wow. They can call into my conference line. Mm-hmm. And so the question then becomes, do you want to see me or do you want the word? Because if you want the word, we got the word. Mm-hmm. But if you want me, you probably ain't going to get me. <laughs> no, no time soon. Right? But don't want me more than you want the word. Exactly. <laughs> you understand? And so, yeah. But, you know, so people have to understand seasons. And it's also why we ought to celebrate other people coming up in ministry because what I'm unwilling to do at this stage of my life, somebody else is willing to do because they're in a season that they can travel. You know, they don't have the husband. They don't have the children yet. Mm -hmm. And so that's their season. Um, And so that's why I tell people is don't envy anybody else's season and stay in your season because there's blessings where you are. And ironically enough, my millions came when I shifted from being on the road so much. Really? To being absolutely because when I shifted, it forced me to make where I was prosperous. Mm. You understand? Absolutely. And so, whereas in that season, I needed to go out to mm-hmm. become prosperous. And that's okay because that was necessary for where God needed me to be, right. what he needed me to do. But again, what you are called to do will shift with your season. And you have to be okay with that. You cannot be the 40-year-old trying to still function like you're a teenager. Egg. Girl. My God. <laughs> you can't do I that. I just had that whole, uh, what do you call it, awakening. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I work with younger artists. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, you know, I'm very involved in their day-to-day. But I realized, uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I, you, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to the room. I have to be honest about me. <laughs> Absolutely. I need a, yeah, I'm going to take a little break. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so funny, people like you, you guys remember in 2006, again, 2006, I was, what, 22, 23 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm 40. I'll be 41 in June. Mm. I've matured. I've evolved. I've changed. Yes. You have become. Yes, and becoming. Yes. And you like loving this season. This season is being kind to you. Being very kind to yes. me. Yes. <laughs> you and you and baby girl. <laughs> I love that. So what is what is on the horizon for you? What can we look forward to? Again, or, or I have another in, book that's okay. gonna come out with a celebrity that I'm very I'm excited about because I get real raw and I just get into Ooh. some stuff. So uh we definitely talk about it in, in that particular book that'll be launching within the next ninety days. Of oh, course, before your birthday? Yes, before my birthday, because oh. my birthday is in June. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, but this, the world, I mean, I feel like it's already April, is yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> this year is passing. Time is passing. Uh, and then on top of that, and in addition to my children's affirmation book, yeah. I have a whole mommy brand Ooh. that is launching that I am so excited about. Nice. And again, mommyhood was why I was created. It was, you know, as much as I enjoy being on the road preaching, and I will still do that. I got a couple of invitations I've already said yes to. Uh, I got a slide one. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the core of, of, of me, I'm a mommy. That, I, that, that is my ministry. When I tell you, I wake up so grateful for my daughter. I mm-hmm. wake up just praying over her. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so funny. When we first brought her home and I was praying, she got to look at me now. She only paid me attention. Like, oh. I'm used to my mama. <laughs> my mama going to slang or she going to preach. She going to prophesy. Yes, I love it. <laughs> the people it. on my teleconference, I would tell you, sometimes I hear my daughter in the background because mm-hmm. she is just so used to her mommy now. Mm. Um, but above and beyond that, I have a mommy brand that I will be launching that has so many legs to it. I was about to say, what does that encompass? Like, Absolutely. What are, well, yeah. we got a couple of surprises, but okay. just understand we are going to be speaking um, to the whole woman nice. and the totality of motherhood. Um, and I'm very excited about that. I'm, I'm very excited about where that's going to go. Um, and yeah, other than that, girl, I told the Lord, listen, <laughs> I'm about to launch this and then I'm headed to Accra in New Zealand to live in my home. <laughs> oh! Oh. Yes, oh that's God. the next big thing we're working on is uh, those two countries. Uh, well, across the city, but Ghana, yeah, in Ghana, yeah, and and New Zealand. So stay tuned to that because big things pop. Wow! So you'll be moving around. I already move around now. Oh but yeah, yeah, you but, do, but, yeah, but we're we're gonna be really putting some roots. I love it. Uh, I love Ghana. how your daughter will be exposed to this early too. Oh, absolutely. So, you my know, daughter has a passport. Yeah, my that's what I'm saying. My daughter has a SkyMail account. That's the saddest thing. And I fuss with people in my family mm-hmm. about that. Do not limit, let these children be global citizens because they'll mm-hmm. think that the vacation is only to Miami Mm-mm. or to the beach. No, you know no, what I'm saying? No, no. Or, you know what I mean? And we've like, done Miami. We've done the beach. But no, my daughter has a passport. My daughter mm-hmm. has a SkyMail <laughs> account. My daughter has flown first class. Right. My daughter got a Roth IRA. I'm like, girl. Yes, and shame <laughs> on you. If uh, a baby that's not even two years old have all that and you don't have all that, <laughs> you got some work to do. Well, yeah, but in I wanna this be, season, I, I want to be easy on the listeners because you know what? Yeah. It's okay. It's you understand? Okay. Because had I had her earlier, I would not have been able to do that. Absolutely. You understand? Absolutely. So just stop, uh, you know, create a goal, a vision that you have. And that's something else I want to say to the people listening in. Yeah. We create vision boards for our personal life, we yeah. create vision boards for our business. Create a vision board 
regarding the type of parent you want to be. I love that. Can we say that for one second too? Because I have a lot of listeners that are moms mm-hmm. and professional moms. Mm-hmm. And I, I talk to even, you know, family members and mentees and, and everything, and they have a mommy guilt or they don't really have a, a, a tried and true way of balancing that time that they need to pour into their children and also being on purpose and in purpose. Mm-hmm. Do you have any advice there? Help, H-E-L-P. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when I brought my daughter home from the hospital for the first six months of her life, she had a night nanny. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. She had a night nanny. Yeah. Because, again, you know, I walked into motherhood during a very prosperous time of my life. Mm-hmm. And so- Still I, booked and busy. You better believe it. Uh. <laughs> and so, and 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 what I understood is, is that Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman. Yeah. Read it, baby. She had help. She had, she had help. servants. OK. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes to be a great mother, you have to reach out for help. I knew that I would make a much happier mother if yeah. I got good sleep at night. Yeah. So I brought in night nannies. You understand? Yeah, I just read that. Qualified, in the book. <laughs> certified. One yeah. of her night nannies is a real nurse at Forsyth, up in Forsyth. OK. Northside mm-hmm. Forsyth. Wow. So these are real professionals. This is what they do. And of course, I have cameras throughout my home. Yeah. You know, I can run back and look at anything I want to look at. But at the end of the day, help. I have a cleaning service that comes in and clean my home. Because again, if that frees me to take my daughter to the zoo or the aquarium yeah. or to do whatever I want to do, then mm-hmm. that's what it's going to be. And I'm not going to feel guilty about that. Mm-mm. I refuse to feel guilty because again, listen, the Bible governs my life. And the Proverbs 31 woman was virtuous and had help. Yeah. I'm going to be virtuous and have help too. Amen. Absolutely. So that's something to put on a vision board. <laughs> help. <laughs> help. You, help you is on the way. You created to do it alone. Not at all. Nothing. Yeah, None my of husband this. and I, we have a date night this week. The nanny is coming in. I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> I love the way you say that. Mm-hmm. Unapologetically. <laughs> Unapologetically. So don't, email me, don't post on my page about what you think. I do not care what you think. Right. I'm running my house. I'm going to say her house. Right. Amen. Speak on your own. <laughs> Now tell us how we can how can someone work with you or or well I know they can keep up with you to see you if you speak and when you're speaking but coaching you mentioned coaching and that sort of thing what Ooh, is that good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> those one on ones when I launch China you could catch me but now and I give God the glory I have to do group coaching okay yeah I rarely if I, I'm doing one on one coaching that's for my ten thousand dollar and up clients I just yeah. signed a client last night at thirty five thousand. Um, And so, of course, they're going to get one on one time, you know, with me over the phone via Zoom and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, But group coaching is the thing. And I love it Mm -hmm. even more because with group coaching, you get to hear other people ask questions. And so you don't feel alone. Uh, This morning, I launched a a, uh, group coaching call that we're going to do every Wednesday in March uh, for women uh, who are interested in getting married again. OK, oh, wow. and, and and what that needs to look like from the inside out, mm-hmm. how you reinvent, how you evolve, how you heal, how you don't become bitter and how you get back out there in life and attract better. Mm, I love that. Attract better. And so that as I was walking in today, I think the last numbers I saw from my team was we're at 250 women who've already registered. And so those type of group coaching calls, you can. um actually connect Mm -hmm. by emailing Tara, T-E-R-A, at Tara, T-E-R-A, Carissa, Mm -hmm. C-A-R-I-S-S-A dot com. Uh, You can also text live to Mm 833-677-0216. And if you text live to that, you'll become a part of my text group. Mm -hmm. And they literally get an alert on their phone every single time I'm going live or just when I want to send out inspiration. Nice. Got that, everybody? Mm Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And we have the book. And the Mommy Brand's launching when? The Mommy Brand, we're going to have that launch no later than May 1st because we're going to be rocking and rolling by Mother's Day. Nice. For my career women, success bullying, successbullying.us. U.S. Oh, okay. Absolutely. That is for very successful women. Oftentimes, when you're climbing that ladder of success, people will hate you. People will hate on you. People will lie on you mm-hmm. out of jealousy. Bullying. And so my my brand, Success Bullying, which is trademark, but that brand, we're going through a website relaunch right now. It has taken off because so many women are connecting with, you know, being attacked mm-hmm. because all because they've been successful. Oh, what did you do to be successful? Girl, I worked yeah. my tail off. Mm-hmm. I got degrees you don't know about. Right. I got certifications, baby. But when jealousy is speaking, yes. 
it, it wants to accuse you of all kinds of things you never even thought of. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so my brand, Success Bullying, it helps women navigate um, how wonderful. to be successful in that piece. Because one thing about it is I haven't been through hell to get to a place called peace and be agitated. Right. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be at peace. Us. I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And so there's a way to navigate your haters. Oh, yes. I love that mm -hmm. too, because that bullying is real. Like that is something that should be a part of business coaching because you're thinking I'm doing all this stuff. But mm -hmm. once you get your neck and neck with somebody or you're competing for clients or you're in a uh, corporate environment, someone quote unquote could be your little lunch friend or your, 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 but when it comes to moving ahead, a lot of people are so competitive mm -hmm. in regards, but relentlessly mm -hmm. to your, and to you your detriment. And you have to understand strategy because here's the thing. You can't control your enemy, but you can control, control you. you. Absolutely. And so we talk about various strategies on that website on how to protect yourself, you know, how to move and what to do. And, and that's key because you have to understand that you still have power because yeah. one thing about an enemy is an enemy wants you to feel powerless. Mm -hmm. And as long as you are looking at what they're doing, yeah. you are going to feel powerless because there's nothing you can do about what they're doing. But when you begin to focus on what you can do, you know, I read a quote in psychology today years ago, I never forgot. And it said, overall, men are happier than women, but men are happier than women because men have a tendency to focus on what they can control while oh. women have a tendency to focus on what they can't control. So remaining at peace is about going inside and remaining present and remaining in control. Present and in control. Now that's the soft life. <laughs> peace. Absolutely. Presence, control. That in of itself will quench that anxiety. Mm-hmm. So I think we're down. Oh my gosh. I think we're down to our last two questions. All I feel right. like I could talk to you all day. <laughs> but I know you got things to do and your baby's waiting. Okay. Yes. But I do want to talk to you about prophecy because okay. I'm a huge mm -hmm. pro pro proponent of um, prophecy. Prophecy has been a guiding light mm -hmm. in my life before I even knew it. Mm -hmm. Cause I am the one, I don't know. Like one of my best friends said, what, how do they always find you? <laughs> you know, and, and, and just give me enough. And it's confirming most, you know, the majority of the time that I've looked back over my life, how, and I already know the answer, I believe, but I would like you to answer it mm -hmm. at large. Um, how prevalent and important is prophecy today? Prophecy is very important. However, mm -hmm. I caution people about being so caught up in prophecy mm -hmm. that they are not reading what has already been written. Because you're not going to know if a prophecy is of God mm. if you don't know what God has already said. Right. Okay. Yeah. So oftentimes in coaching, I've had women come to me and say, well, God said, I'm just going to use him as an example. Mm -hmm. President Barack Obama is my husband. I, I, <laughs> the Bible does not endorse that. Right. He said it. Right. Okay. okay. And so you have to understand that the, the Bible is very clear. Mm -hmm. There are many voices in the spirit. We mm -hmm. see that in Matthew four, when Satan has a voice and he's using that voice to talk to Jesus. We see that in Jesus's ministry when demons jump in pigs and begin to cry out. Right. There are many voices in the spirit. And if you don't know God's voice, God's voice will never violate his word. If you don't know the word of God, mm -hmm. something can sound good, but it's not good. And so, yes, prophecy is a gift, but prophecy is not designed to replace the written word of God. Right. It is not designed to replace your prayer life. It's just a gift. Mm. I had to <laughs> sit in there for a minute. <laughs> That is powerful. Mm -hmm. huh. And this last question, um, well, you kind of already answered it. I just want to make sure that you share um, how they can continue to follow you, your social media handles. Mm -hmm. I think you gave the um, the website and we'll have that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. But anything else that you want to share with, with, with us? I want everybody to really focus on their walk with God and learn how to tune out the outside noise, mm -hmm. the outside voices. You will always have critics, but keep this in mind. Your critics have critics. You will always have people giving their opinion or they don't think this or they don't think that. But keep in mind, you're not living a life to please them. Mm -hmm. You're living a life to please God and to be at peace. Yeah. And so if you can discipline yourself to remain focused on your walk and your journey, despite what somebody else is doing, despite what somebody else is saying, you are going to sense a lot of your anxiety go and that is the key. 
That is the key to remaining at peace, remaining joyful. People don't have to understand your life. People don't have to agree with your life. Whatever you need to do for you, do mm -hmm. that for you. As long as it's not illegal, unethical, immoral, or violate scripture, do it. Because that's another thing that I run into is too many adults trying to explain to other grown folks why they're doing what they're doing. You don't owe... I mean, grown you, folks. Most people you do not owe an explanation to. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some you give an explanation out of just being courteous. Right. But if you think about it, most people you do not owe them an explanation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the key is, is to learn how to be in this world, but not of this, this world. world. Meaning... I'm here. I'm going to function. I'm going to do what needs to get done. But I'm not going to be so connected into other people in this world mm -hmm. that I allow them to jack up my inner world. Right. My peace, my joy, my walk with God. Yeah. And that's what I want to leave the listeners with. I love that. Right. Thank you so much. I think you just really freed a lot of people. To God be the glory. Yes, with that statement alone. Because at the end of the day, people are so accountable to other people and mm -hmm. you don't owe them an explanation. <laughs> you do not. <laughs> Think about it. Right. Yeah. They're going to go on with their life. Tell them to go with God. Mm -hmm. I will leave them with this. Make a list of the things that matter to you in your life. For mm -hmm. me, it's my walk with God. It's my marriage. It's my children. It's my finances. And the person that is your enemy, look at that list and see if they can impact that. And if they can't impact that, understand you don't have an enemy. There's nothing <laughs> they can do. Nothing. <laughs> an enemy is somebody that can fight you. Right. But when there's nothing they can do. Yeah. You just have someone who doesn't like you, and that's their problem. Right, that's their problem. You have a problem with me, and I don't know about it. It's your <laughs> problem. Well, thank you so much, Tara Carissa Hodges, for being with us. Um, with your busy schedule, I, again, we are truly honored because we know that you have to be here, and deciding to be here and share with my audience is amazing. So thank you. And you guys, get this book. Get these books. And I can't wait to see that mommy brand. Yeah, thank you. She has a secret sauce. <laughs> All right, just breathe with April Love. We are breathing a whole lot better because we've released and been delivered from these people and their opinions because we're grown. All right, talk to you soon, guys. <laughs>